right, everyone. So we'll go ahead and get started here. Let me wrap up the poll and share the results with y'all. Um, pretty interesting here and uh, not surprising to say the least. Uh, we have seen that prior to the COVID situation, prior to people being, uh, you know, in, in work from home environments and working remote, you know, Teams adoption just really wasn't uh, something to write home about. The adoption numbers since the COVID situation have been uh, tremendous and, and we have really um, you know, accelerated and ushered in a digital age through this experience in a much faster pace than, than it was happening prior. So we will stop that poll there. Um, and then let's see, I think there is one more I'd like to share with you um, at the end uh, about Teams. So guys, when we, when we look at Teams and the training session today, my goal for everyone that is on this session today is to get them more acclimated, more comfortable with Teams conceptually understanding what it is, what it does, um, and then being able to take that, that knowledge and apply it and, and use this in your business. Um, you know, a majority of small businesses are using Office 365. It's been relabeled now as Microsoft 365, either for their office licensing, right, for Word, Excel, PowerPoint, um, or maybe for their email hosting as well. So Teams is included in that subscription. Um, and it's a product that, um, you know, quite frankly, up until the last three, four, five months, wasn't really marketed, wasn't really pushed by Microsoft, uh, as well as maybe it could have been. And so, um, you know, there's been lots of questions about this. And I think that you'll be able to really gain some useful information here, guys. Uh, the idea is that we are going to provide you with enough education in this session. And we're actually going to go through a real life scenario. So we're, we've got a, you know, business scenario we've, 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 uh, uh, replicated. Here's a business. Here's some goals they're trying to achieve. And then here's how they're going to do that through teams. And so we're actually going to do that demo for you guys in real time. So I will give you through, I will uh, walk you through an introduction here, ladies and gentlemen, on what teams does, what its use case is. Uh, and then we're going to give y'all our perspective on teams as well after that, after we do a demo. So through that demo scenario, we'll have about half an hour there. Guys, as we are, um, as we're doing the demo, if you have a question that you want to see uh, applied in that demo, a scenario, uh, maybe something that you're thinking of, hey, it'd be cool if they could show us X, Y, and Z, feel free to hit that, hit us up in the Q&A there. Uh, we've got Lauren on this that is moderating our chats for us. And so she'll be able to, uh, she'll be able to filter those in. We should be able to add some things to our, our demo in real time here. And then lastly, we're going to do a Q&A. You know, I already saw one question that popped up that was a great question about, um, you know, why are we using the Zoom webinar platform to do a Teams training? Um, we'll hit on all that here at the end. Um, so let's get started and go ahead and introduce our presenters. Uh, here I am. I'm Reese Orman and CEO of TechVera. We're an IT company based in Denton, Texas. We've got 13 team members and we're all about empowering small businesses using technology, uh, ushering in their digital transformation so that they can do what they do best and let us manage the technology behind the scenes, right? This isn't a conversation about bits and bytes and hardware and geek talk. We're talking real business issues and real business outcomes. Um, and my counterpart, our team's expert, our guru that is on the call here, I'll let him introduce himself. And that is Mr. Justin Dews. Justin, how are you doing today, man? Doing well. How are you, Reese? Good, good. Awesome. It's a busy Thank time you, around here. What's that? But it's always busy. I like I like the busyness. I like Absolutely. keeping busy. Absolutely. I wouldn't have it any other way. No. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for taking time out of your day to, to join us to, to do some Teams training here. My my role here at TechVera has uh, encompasses a little bit of everything. One of those things is uh, adminning our Microsoft 365 and more specifically our Teams environment. So happy to share some of our, our knowledge with you today. Thank you, man. And guys, one of the things that's been really, uh, you know, uh, a, a lot of the experience Justin has gained through his kind of team's expertise, he's gotten to that by implementing, rolling this out for our flat rate partners, uh, implementing it obviously internally here as well. Um, so he's got a wealth of knowledge and kind of practical use cases. Uh, if you guys have any questions on this stuff after the session, please feel free to uh, hit us up and let's, let's take a look at that, right? And so what is Teams, guys? Uh, the, the thing I want you all to take away from this is yes, that Teams does do chat, it does do video, but please don't think of it that way. Teams is a centralized hub where all of the work in your organization get done, can get done, right? So um, whether it's um, project management, whether it's uh, sharing Excel documents, whether it's uh, uh, scheduling weekly meetings with your team, 
whether it's, you know, now we, you know, some people went remote, some are coming back, now we all have to collaborate. It is a centralized place for everyone to collaborate and, and be productive in this kind of new normal that we're dealing with here. You know, the primary focus is enhancing a unified workspace, uh, I'm sorry, workspace, workspace uh, to boost your productivity, okay? Um, there's a quote that I've got here from Satya Nadella. He's the CEO of Microsoft. It was on an earnings call a couple of days ago, uh, but pretty interesting piece here. Uh, he said, as COVID-19 impacts every aspect of our work and life, uh, we've seen two years worth of digital transformation ushered in in two months. Um, he touted that Microsoft Teams is the only tool that combines meetings, calls, chats, and collaboration in one place, given that it integrates with the rest of the Office 365 cloud suite. And guys, that is the that is the kind of cherry on top that Microsoft has is that they have this footing. Everyone is immersed in the productivity suites of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, right? So just take that in. Let's usher it in the digital transformation of that, leveraging all that technology through Teams as a centralized hub to do all that, right? So the, uh, the other player in this space you may be familiar with is Slack, okay? Um, prior to Teams getting uh, this kind of disruptive kind of uh, – pop that you've seen here lately, Slack was the big player in this space a couple of years ago. Now, as of October, Slack had about 12 million active users. Not sure where that number is now. I'm sure it's increased. But around that same time in November, Teams had 20 million users. Okay. Now in April, Teams had 44. I'm sorry, in March, April had four, uh, 44 million users. Now in, uh, in April, Microsoft Teams now has 75 million active users. And so the uh, adoption of this has been tremendous, 75 active million users per day. And um, the key takeaways that I want you to get from this is that because this is gaining so much market share, because there is so much momentum in the small business space, uh, Microsoft is really pushing the, the roadmap and the evolution of the product. Now, this is a product that was built for enterprise and brought down, okay? You can have up to 5,000 uh, teams members, uh, and, you know, employees in the organization in a single team, you know, so it has tremendous scale with it as well. Um, clipped an article here for y'all to see from The Verge. That, uh, that use, that jump of users that they have is, is a big deal. Uh, and, and part of this is there's one-off features uh, such as hosting a webinar, right? Zoom is a great tool to, to communicate with people outside your organization, family, friends, it's very easy, works for video conferencing, but it's not a collaboration hub, right? And so there are some features that Microsoft's quickly, you know, trying to, to evolve so that they can be in that all-in-one suite. So just know that in the future, uh, when we do these Teams training, we'll be doing these the Microsoft Stream and the Microsoft Live, uh, Live application, which is their kind of webinar component to that, okay? Um, so, when you're looking at Teams, you know, we talked about conceptually what it is. When you are using it, know that you've got a lot of options at your disposal. So there's a desktop client that's a standalone app. Now, Justin's going to walk you all through this. In the past, um, if you had Office 365, it was a standalone install. You actually had to go into the portal and download the Teams installer outside of, you know, your standard Word, Excel, and, and that kind of installation package. So uh, that desktop app provides real-time communication for team meetings, group calling, private one-on-one -on -one calls. So if you're looking for the best call quality, which calling is a function in this, the desktop client is the way to go. Now there is a web client that's very powerful as well. It's fully functional. Um, it offers a consistent experience. It's very similar to the desktop application. Um, this is really helpful for you too, if you're a member of uh, one tenant and you're a guest in another tenant. So for me, I'm a member of, I'm a member of the TechVera Teams tenant. Well, there's another tenant that we use uh, for another organization we work with, Justin and I are members on that. And we can switch bet between the actual tenants of Teams and that's at a high level, right? And then the last piece, ladies and gentlemen, the mobile device, uh, the, the smartphone app for Android, iPhone, whatever the case may be. This is really, really useful to, uh, to engage in the chat, uh, to, to speak in Teams, to go through your messages. Um, and you know, we have clients, uh, we have team members here when we do our three o'clock stand-up meeting. Um, sometimes they'll take their, their call while they're out walking, right? And so they can do that. Um, all that functionality is there through the, uh, that platform as well. When you look at Teams in, in a kind of uh, hierarchy of business structure. They have, they have mimicked teams to replicate an organization and department level uh, configuration. So what I mean by that is when you look at this graphic here, you know, just imagine, um, let me pull up my marker here. 
um, just imagine that we've got, you know, um, these different teams here are different departments within the organization, right? So maybe, maybe here is your sales team, okay? Maybe this is your accounting uh, team, and then maybe this is your operations team. So these are the departments that you would set up. Each one of those would have its own team. Now under that team, it would have these kind of, uh, these child relationships to channels. Those channels can be uh, channels for projects, for tasks, for processes within that department, right? There's probably a procurement process uh, in your project team, right? So that's the kind of structured level um, kind of scenario that Teams is intended for. Um, just to kind of get your head moving in the right direction with that, I wanna lay the groundwork for a scenario here that Justin is going to, um, that Justin's going to run for us. So the real life scenario, guys, let's just play this one out. So Jennifer's a business owner, guys, and she was caught off quarter last, uh, she was caught off guard last quarter and working remotely proved difficult without a centralized hub. So we were, um, you know, we heard from a lot of people out in the community that when they went remote, if they were an office that, that relied heavily on email, this was a common challenge, right? You can't just tap, uh, you know, Mark on the shoulder next door to you when you work remote. And so uh, there was a lot of disjointed conversations and email really becoming a, a overtaxed because they're using it to, to manage these quick exchanges that normally would have happened in person. And so Jennifer's had these frustrations, they were cut off guard um, and, and working remote is proved to be harder than they anticipated. So now she knows Teams is the way to go. She's seen all the, the marketing about it. Her friends have told her about it. So we're gonna follow Jennifer in her process is they digitize departments, automate processes, and leverage these other useful features. And so with that, I'm going to let, uh, I'm gonna have Justin take the wheel here, guys. And you're going to see this from Justin's point of view, if he were Jennifer, the, uh, the person implementing teams at their organization, what this looks like um, from the onset of logging into the Office 365 account. So, cool. All right. Uh, before you start here, Justin, I did get a question from a, a member on the audience here. Um, yes, the recording, we will send out an email, ladies and gentlemen, afterwards, the, the email will have a link to the recording and you can absolutely uh, share that with your staff. So feel free to do that, okay? Cool, all right, Justin, I will let you take the wheel, man. Awesome, so yeah, first things, we've gotta get logged into Office or Microsoft 365, right? So here I'm, gonna, I'm at the login screen, so I'm gonna pick my account. Um, we're going to go ahead and get logged in here. Should I type? I can. So, good deal. This is actually the web interface for Microsoft 365. If, if it does not look familiar to you, uh, you can access all of the services from this uh, address, which is just portal.office.com. Uh, so, from here, I'm going to click on the Teams uh, icon to open up Teams. This, this would be if you do not already have Teams installed on your system. You can go here, log in, click on the icon, and now it gives me the option. It's like, hey, do you want to use the web app or do you want to download the Windows app? So I'm going to pretend like I clicked on the uh, download the Windows app here. And we're going to, I'm going to flip over to the Teams app and uh, we'll go from there. So let me go ahead and sign in here with my account. Again, we're doing this from the like, like you know, just we're, we're just now starting off. So, we're now hey. logging into the so Microsoft our, Teams app. Hope as just say, go ahead. I was going to say, as Justin does this, guys, our our goal with um, showing you all this from scratch was to show you that that this can be done pretty quickly and. Um, you know, if you just put a little bit of a thought and, and kind of vision into where you want this to go, uh, it's not as big of a overwhelming task as people make it out to be just getting in here and getting it rolling. And so since we've been speaking here, Justin has logged, it, logged into Teams for the first time. And now I'll, I'll let him take you through the, uh, the demo. All right. So this is the Teams interface. And uh, first thing we want to go over is kind of the navigation pane on the left-hand side and, and what all of these little buttons do. Uh, the first one here is activity. So anytime uh, a message is posted or, or you're, you're, uh, you're tagged in a message or somebody 
sends you a chat or, or, or sends you a file or something like that, that, op, that action is going to be logged and put into this activity feed. Uh, so from here, you can very quickly see things that you may have missed, right? You can also filter um, by person or, or item or whatnot. You can filter by, you know, if you were mentioned in a, a channel. Um, this just makes it easy for you to go find some activity that you may have missed if you were away from the office. The next one here is chat. Um, chat's very simple, right? It's just, uh, you know, this is a conversation you're going to have with another person. So, for example, if I wanted to start a chat with Reese, I can click the uh, little start chat button up here. I can type in Reese's name. And very quickly, you know, I can start a, you know, a chat with Reese. Uh, and he would get this message on his end and, and could reply back to it or whatnot. Real quick on that, Justin, what I want to tell everyone here is that, uh, and I just actually logged into the web app. You might have heard that little ping there. I've got desktop no notifications turned on because it is a demo. Um, but this is really, really cool, guys. Um, the chat, which is the feature most people kind of think of uh, as, the, uh, as the kind of default for Teams, there's so much more to it than this. The chats are one-off conversations. This isn't, hey, the guys in the accounting department need to talk. They can do that in actual Teams channel. Uh, the chats are more one-to-one -one. and so these are really useful even outside your organization so let's say you know i needed to speak to someone else that had a microsoft account we could set up a chat and it would be a a chat one-to-one -one outside the organization but everything would still be uh you know within this microsoft environment right so next on the list is teams and teams is what reese was just talking about a, a moment ago where he had the uh the organizational chart set up this is where you kind of create that hierarchy, right? This is where you create your teams, those channels, we keep our files, all those, all of that good stuff. And we're gonna jump right back into this here in a minute, but I wanna continue with the navigation pane. On the left-hand side, you also see calendar. So this calendar will tie in with your Outlook calendar. Uh, we are using a demo account, so unfortunately I don't have anything to show from my Outlook calendar on here, but just know if you had items in your Outlook calendar listed, they could also be, they would also be viewable here. Um, from here, you can create, you can uh, start a meeting right now, which would, would create a video conference meeting, um, or you can, you know, go ahead and schedule a meeting for the future. And we're going to go over this here in a bit. Calls is uh, just what it sounds like. Uh, Microsoft Teams does have the ability to do voice calls, so you can use the phone essentially through uh, Microsoft Teams. It is a developing kind of service that Microsoft is putting out there. It's Definitely not as full-featured as a full-blown phone system, but uh, well, we'll get the job done. Um, files tab here is just any of the files that you've interacted with recently will be uh, viewable here. Um, if you're not sure where a file was stored, you can quickly navigate through here and find those files that you had been working with. Uh, you can also attach your OneDrive. So if you're, if you're familiar with Microsoft OneDrive and using it to store your My Documents, uh, you can attach that in here and those documents would be available to you in Teams. Last few little uh, icons down here, apps. It does have the ability to tie in third-party applications, which can really accelerate uh, what you're doing with integrations and, and automation inside of Teams. And I think that's, we're going to talk more about this in our next, uh, our 201 episode here in a couple of days. Uh, help button to kind of, uh, you know, if you, need, if you need assistance with something, uh, great help resource down here. And then finally, the download the mobile app. Uh, this, would, this would probably send you a text message to your phone where you can go ahead and, and download that app to your phone. Can I say something on that too, yeah. Justin? So guys on the navigation pane, um, like Justin said, the activity feed, we'll go in and show you how to kind of tweak your notifications. But let's say you've been out of the office for a day or two and you need to catch up on everything that has gone on. Well, if you've got your notifications tuned right, um, you can see all the updates to your pertinent channels and when people have tagged you through that feed. So that's a really useful feature. The other thing I wanted to, to quickly uh, show y'all is that those tiles there in the navigation pane, they are movable, right? So if you're going to be living in Teams, if you want to show them, Justin, you actually drag and drop the location of those. Um, that's just another kind of useful one-off feature there. Um, but structurally, these are the kind of components of Teams um, you know, Microsoft's vision, Microsoft's goal with you using Teams is that, you know, if you are chatting with someone about a topic in a Teams channel, and that now requires maybe a meeting, hey, you can quickly create a meeting from your calendar right here. It'll sync back to Outlook. You can even take it a couple of steps further, creating that 
uh, meeting within Teams, but it doesn't interrupt your workflow, ladies and gentlemen. You can do everything from this single pane of glass. I think that's the, the really high level kind of objective that Microsoft has with this tool stack. Um, I just wanted to say at a high level on the structure overview, those are things that have helped me is changing my tiles up and then tweaking notifications, especially if you're gone after a long weekend or something, it'll help you catch up rather than going through and kind of digging through all the different uh, conversations that have gone down. So going back to the scenario that, that Reese put together for us to kind of play, play out through here was that, you know, Jennifer is having trouble uh, working remote without some sort of central hub. And so today what we were gonna do is, you know, the, 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 the department having the most challenges is the accounting department. So she's decided that the first department she wants to move to Teams to work out of Teams is accounting. So we've got to create a team for her, right? Down here, we're, you notice we're in the Teams tab, we're in the Teams section. Down at the bottom is the join or create option. We're gonna go ahead and create a team. We're gonna build this team from scratch. And we're gonna make this team private. The reason why that's important, making a private team allows us to only assign certain individuals to be able to see and access resources within that team. So accounting, as you know, can have some you know, sensitive uh, data and information. And so we only want those in the accounting department to have access to this team. We're gonna click on private. We're gonna call this uh, accounting and click on create. So it's gonna do what it needs to do in the background to create this team. Bam, we're done. Now we've got to add those members. So today, Reese, we're making you the CFO of the business. So All you got right. to come in here, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we're going to add Lauren. Um, we're going to add, I think Emily needs to be in here. And, uh, you know, I think Jordan needs to be in here too. So we're going to add all of these individuals right. to this team. So like I said, only these individuals within the organization would be able to see the accounting team. Nice. And as he was doing that, guys, in real time on my web browser that's logged into Teams, I, I got a notification that I was added to the accounting team here. So by default, every team you create is, gonna, is going to have a general channel. That's just, that's just that's a given. I don't know that you can get rid of it. But it's a great place just to have those, those uh, department-wide conversations, right? Something that everybody needs to be aware of. Hey, the accounting, company, the accounting department's uh, buying lunch today. You know, what do you want? Uh, or, or we're all going out to eat or whatnot. Um, so that's a great spot. The general channel is a great spot for that. But we want to create some additional channels so that we can really hone in our conversations around particular topics. So for the, for the purpose of this demo, we're going to add an account receivable channel. So you click on the little ellipses here next to the team name. Click on add channel and give it a name. So we're gonna call this accounts receivable. All right. Um, if you wanna give a description, you can. And then on this privacy option here, we're gonna go over private here in a second, but just know when you click on standard, that means anybody that has access to the team will also have access to this channel. Check this box to automatically show this channel so that it's not doesn't come up as hidden. And then we'll go ahead and click add. That's simple to add a channel to your team. And channels are important because they allow you to break up conversations and place them around particular topics, projects, procedures, whatnot, versus everything just kind of be thrown into a general channel. Uh, the next one we're gonna do is be accounts payable because everybody loves accounts payable, right? Uh, automatically show this one. And we're gonna do one more team. And it's, this is for the purpose of showing you what a private team would look like. So we're gonna add a channel. This one's gonna be called budget. But this time only myself and the CFO need to see this channel, right? So we're gonna make this one private. And when I click next, it's gonna say, hey, who in the team needs to see this channel? Well, by default, because I'm creating the channel, I'm gonna be added to it. So I'm gonna add Reese. So only myself and Reese need to see this channel. So we're done here. Now you'll notice that the channel now has a little lock icon next to it, meaning this is a private channel that only certain people have access to. I want so, to say something on that real quick, Justin, just another use case, ladies and gentlemen, I've seen a lot of people use for that is if you have a, 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 a channel for HR matters, maybe resumes, something like that, having a hidden channel 
um, restricted to the only to the people that are going to be reviewing the resume, something like that. This is a great way to help manage the access of sensitive and pertinent information uh, at the channel level. <clears throat> so what we're going to do now is I think it's, you know, I think there's some documents that Reese and I need to share with each other. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and upload those documents to this channel and, and go over how that's now moving a file from, from maybe your old file server and making it a living, breathing document inside of, of Teams and, and more importantly, SharePoint, which SharePoint is the, the storage or the, the file kind of a storage system that's on the back end of Teams, right? Um, so you'll notice here in the channel, oh, very quickly, we can start a conversation. Hey, check this out. Oh, he did, okay, perfect. So Reese has started a conversation. He's asking me for that budget template. So I can say, you know, hey Reese, here it is, right? There's an attach icon here. I can actually attach this file to my reply in the conversation, which is what I'm gonna do. And it wants, there we go. So you see you have these options here. Uh, if you have your OneDrive attached, you can pull files from your OneDrive. We're actually gonna upload from my computer. So this is gonna open a very familiar, you know, looking window. This is my machine here. You can see this is our, our TechVera shared drive. I'm sure many of you have these in your offices. I'm going to upload that trip budget right from there. So guys, think about this. This is the one time push of that data that you used to have. Maybe you had a folder share off a server, uh, a local share there at your office. There's a one time evolution you take. You take that, that old static trip budget Excel doc in this case, and we have now uploaded it into the Microsoft uh, Teams tenant, to that Microsoft cloud environment, right? Now from this point on, this is a dynamic, this is a breathing document, right, Justin? That's correct, yes. So this document is now saved in SharePoint, uh, and anybody that accesses it, makes changes to it, uh, will be real-time updated. Anybody that has access to this document will see those changes in near real-time, uh, which, is, which is really, really neat. You know, you're not having to, so what's, what would this replace? Well, we've all been in those email chains where there's, you know, a thousand replies back and forth, We've got 17 different versions of the file of the spreadsheet because Jane made changes and then Tom made changes. And then we're not sure which one's the most recent, right? Uh, could be the one. Somebody got confused, they added the wrong one. Now we have data all over the place. By using Teams and, and, and putting that file in a, in a specific location, we can now keep a live version of that file somewhere. And I think Reese was gonna possibly make some changes. To yeah, it. so do you want to, um, let's see here. Let me go ahead and let me try one. Having a, a permission. You want to go ahead and grant me permission, just re-grant permission to that document or to that channel. Justin, it's uh, not letting me open that. <laughs> see. So let's go ahead and try. Let's just see if we can just upload it from the uh, general channel, perhaps. Correct. Yeah, let's try that. Cool. We'll also go ahead and it, while we're doing this, I want to show you the files tab. So, you know, I uploaded that document. Uh, it's available in the conversation, but we can also find it in the files tab of the channel. So here you can see all files that have been added to the channel. You can think of this file tab as a folder for the channel, just like you'd have folders in, on your, your file server you have now. It's the same sort of uh, setup here inside of Teams. So I'm going to go ahead and upload uh, that budget plus this uh, Word doc that we were talking about, right? Perfect. Yep. So I've uploaded them. Now they're both available. And hopefully you're able to access those now, Reese. Cool. All right. We are opening up. So, so guys, why don't you open up the trip budget, Justin? Yep. So let's say, guys, in this hypothetical scenario, I asked for that trip budget. Justin, we had a template. Justin uploaded that for me. Let's say he has it open while I am editing this and that $1,900 trip budget, if you've ever traveled with me, you know, we're, we're blowing that out of the water. So I'm going to need closer to like a $3,000 trip budget on that. If you can see that purple little uh, avatar that just popped up that little circle there in real time on, on Justin's end, he was able to see the changes that I made. Right. And so let's say now Justin saw that and he had a question about that, you know, um, how could he make a comment or how can we converse about, about this document and work in real time? So you can actually see from the document, 
from the Excel doc that he's got open in Teams, he started a conversation here. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Real time, we can start to have a conversation around this, around this document, and uh, we're collaborating real time. Uh, changes are being made in real time. They're being seen in real time, and, and we're talking in real time. And we're not having to leave to go to different platforms to do it. So I can go back here. I can see Justin's changes. If I wanted to make a comment on something, um, you know, hey, need more budget for this event. Boom. And you'll actually see on his, you'll see that little field that'll pop up. See that the RO field. There's actually a comment field right next to that where I made comments. So Justin and I actually literally use this in real time um, so that we can... Um, <clears throat> so that we can work you know we both have uh we both have families and small kids and um there's times when we have to work and and collaborate on documents and tasks but we're not able to do that face to face or in real time and so this is a really useful application for it i think we're going to expand ab above this so that was throwing an excel document from your old file share into teams and getting it into a and into a usable format right now yeah and i wanted to you know make a comment about something reese because You'll notice here, I just opened up this Word doc, right? This isn't some, you know, dumbed down version of Word inside of Team. This is actual Word. All of your, you know, your options, your menus, everything is available to you. You never had to leave Teams to get into Microsoft Word, right? So you're not having to flip around through Windows. It's all available to you right here. And again, with Word, we can make real-time updates, right? We can, we can conversate about it. We can make comments on it. Um, all of the same things we just did to that spreadsheet. So the last thing that Reese wanted to do, you know, as I know, he wanted to talk about the uh, the, P, the most recent PNL, the PNL forecasting that we need to, to go over. So again, um, we're going to upload that PNL forecast. That easy. Now the file is avail available to both of us. Oh, and something that, that's very useful, guys, for y'all to know is that when you want to upload a file to uh, two teams, to a channel like that, like Justin just demonstrated. There's two ways of going about that. You can actually, in the chat dialog, if you want to back up real quick, Justin, and, and show them that. You know, so in that general chat, you can actually just start chatting here and attach the file. And when you attach it here, um, this is just kind of a front user interface that's actually going to be uploading it to the back end of the team site. Um, so you can see it will upload right there. And so in this case, we already had a file uploaded. Hey, there's already one here. Do you want to keep the old one? Do you want to keep the new one? You want to replace? Um, so just know that the backend repository, everything kind of makes it that way. It's just a matter of do you upload it directly to the files or do you upload it through the post here? Um, that's just one thing I wanted to point out that makes this really easy to upload things in real time as you're doing stuff. And again, the file, the file is available to us uh, for both Reese and I to kind of look at or, or make edits to. And um, Wow, there's a lot. There's a lot going on here, Reese. I think you know. I think it'd probably be best if we, you know, had a conversation, maybe a phone call or or a Teams meeting, so that we can discuss this in real time versus uh, going back and forth in chat. What do you think? Sure. Yeah, man. That's uh, forecasting is a big deal, and um, this is a lot to. That's a lot of data to be able to digest via emails or text. I mean, I think there's value in having some some video and some emotion tied to uh, to those types of meetings. Right. Absolutely. So, you know, from Teams, I don't have to go to Outlook to create a meeting invite. Come right over here, click on Calendar, right? And I can go ahead and create a new meeting right from Teams. Very familiar interface here. This looks very similar to what you would see in Microsoft Outlook. So we're going to give this a title. Um, I'm going to add Reese as an attendee, a required attendee. You can see that the scheduling assistant is available to you. So as you have in Microsoft, I can look to see my schedule, his schedule, and know, okay, let's find the most ideal time for both of us to meet. Go back to details. We can change, you know, give it a day. Uh, let's meet Thursday at, you know, uh, 2.30. Uh, we're going to talk about this for about half an hour. Not a repeating meeting. Here's a... A new uh, feature that comes with Teams is I, I can actually add a channel to this meeting invite. So you recall, we created those channels in accounting, right? So if I wanted to add everybody in the general uh, or everybody in the accounts payable team or, or channel, I could add them here and they would get this meeting invite, right? 
So um, you can add, you know, locations, everything you're used to doing all from Teams. So we'll go ahead and send that out. And we've now created that meeting. It's now visible on my calendar here. It's still kind of trying to load in the background. And then if I had my Outlook configured with this account, you would see that that, that calendar item would come over to Outlook and be visible within Outlook as well. Um, but the, 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 the piece of this being that uh, you never have to leave Teams to, to do some of your core functions that you do inside of, of Microsoft applications. Have we received any sort of, uh, you know, anything anybody wants to see on demo that we can do live? Reese? Yeah, okay. So real quick, um, one thing I didn't show you guys earlier is that uh, you'll notice that my kind of, my ten my team's program is this dark mode. I like Windows in kind of the dark mode they have now with Windows 10. One I didn't show earlier is kind of this, the settings and preferences menu up here. So where my initials are, you can click on that. Um, you can set your status, right? So um, if you're busy or you want to go into do not disturb, so this would mean that no notifications would come up, nobody could message you. You could put turn that on. You could also set a status message. So if you do need to go into DND, you can say, hey, I'm in meetings all day. You know, that's why I'm in DND, so to let people know uh, that you're not just ignoring them, that there's a legit reason why you're, why you're not responding back. Um, this does tie into your calendar. So if you have a calendar, uh, if you have a meeting going on at a specific time, during that time, you would be labeled as busy so that, you know, people could say, okay, they got something going on. Maybe, I, maybe I'll wait till they're available to, uh, to send them a message. And notifications is something I want to go over too, Reese, that I just thought about, uh, I did not show a minute ago. Uh, but then under settings, there's a lot of things that you can change about your team. So I have mine set on a default theme. You can go back to the default kind of, you know, white theme or, or colored theme. Um, yeah, a lot of all, people, Justin, yeah. I was going to say, I just had some questions come in here. Oh, I'm perfect. going through the uh, settings here. A lot of people like that dark contrast, um, particularly if you're working in like a low lit environment, a little bit easier on your eyes. Um, and the other thing I was going to say is you get to notifications there. Why don't you, why don't we go through the notifications and then I'll, I'll, I'll give you a couple of these questions from the, uh, from the audience here. Sure. All right. So um, notifications. So this is kind of like, how are you going to get notified when somebody messages you, messages you or chats in a channel or uh, tags you or whatnot? Uh, some of the general notifications are in this uh, notification settings page. You can see that uh, banner means, you know, there's a pop-up that comes up on the corner in the corner of your screen, right? Uh, email is that obviously that means it's going to send you an email. And then only show in feed would mean that it only shows it in that activity feed that we were showing you earlier, which is this over here. But more importantly, something to note is that by default on these channels, your notifications are going to be off for the most part. So it's, it would be very easy for somebody to send three, four, five different mess messages and you never see them. So we always want to make sure to come over to, to, to our team, into our channel, and change our channel notifications. Um, I always like to see all new posts. I want to be notified when people post in a channel that I'm, I'm interested in. So I, I want to change this new post from off to banner and feed, right? Uh, and replies. I want to make sure that I'm alerted to, to everything that's going on. Uh, it does take a little bit of time to kind of tweak this down to where you want it and you're not getting blown up with notifications all day, but it's very, very useful so that you're not missing uh, key information that, that you definitely want to see. All right, so I saw one of the, the questions here was, uh, which one do you want to take on, Reese? So oh, yeah, there was a couple of questions here. One from uh, Bill, when you upload a file within Teams, is it then visible and accessible to SharePoint? It's a great talking point to talk about kind of Teams and SharePoint, how these, how these play. Yes, so they, they actually are. Um, we can, let's go here. So let me just share another screen with you. I'm gonna go back to my browser real quick and uh, show you my, my, the actual uh, SharePoint page to see that those files are now available. Cool. Um, so yeah, you can see here, I clicked on, I went into SharePoint, right? My, my, my channels are here, right? So I can click on one of these 
and those files are now available inside of documents. Click on documents here. Cool. Yep. And there's that trip budget that I uploaded a little bit ago. Right. So these files, I mean, it's you, this is, it's building SharePoint sites on the back end every time you create a yeah. team and a channel. So that's a great question, Bill. So for those of y'all that are familiar with SharePoint or maybe you're using that in the past, SharePoint or OneDrive, a Teams just lays a really nice UI over the top of that, of that file share technology, right? Another question we had was from uh, Henry. Can you organize the files? Can you add alternate file locations for the team or channel? Can you add alternate file locations for the team or channel? I guess I might need a little bit more context on that. But yeah, so Henry, I might have to follow up with you after this one. I, I think by default, the, um, the files are going to be uploaded in that kind of ad hoc order. There are sorts. If you go just into that tab, you can sort by like the size, the name, the upload. Uh, but one thing I want you to know, everyone, the search window, if you pull up your team session, Justin, the yep. search window is extremely powerful in, in Teams, okay? So this global search up here, you can search for files, messages, conversations. You can also type in commands here too. So the command that I use a lot, and, and we actually have this in the uh, cheat sheet we'll send out, is forward slash DND. So the way Justin showed you how to set your status to do not disturb, uh, rather than going through hitting that status, boom, you can just type in slash DND slash status, you can change those things. And so using that search bar makes it very easy to search for files as well. Um, Justin, we're getting- I think I, I think I want to go back on Henry's question because I, you know, asking about organizing files. And I think, I think what he's talking about is can you create folders within those file lists? And the answer to that is yes, you can. Okay. Right. So if you go over to the files tab, um, you'll see here that I'm able to create a new folder. There we go. Okay. Right? I, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, and say, hey, this is uh, you know May 2020 or whatever, right? And then and upload all your folder. documents to that folder, right? That's correct. Perfect. And again, okay. This, this mirrors itself in SharePoint. So. Okay, cool. Hopefully that answered your question there, Henry. Uh, we had another question here, last one. Can you show uh, how to restrict editing options for team members? I do not want everyone able to edit my documents without permission or deleting my files. That uh, is so, a great one, Denise. <laughs> so what we talked about earlier was you know creating that those private channels this is one way of accomplishing that so only those individuals who had access to that channel would be able to uh, access those files the other way to do it would be to actually you know uh, adjust file permissions on the back end inside of sharepoint right because teams is using sharepoint to uh to manage the files we can actually come into sharepoint and manage access to these specific files, right? So you can see there's, there's groups here. Uh, we can remove these groups. We can add specific individuals. We can do all sorts of uh, set different access levels, right? We cool. can say, can only view, can't There edit. we go. So yeah. I knew there were permissions there. Um, Denise, there might be permissions also. Justin, if you go back to Teams and hit the ellipses next to the actual channel, like the accounting channel, um, that one. If you go here to manage the channel, Manage the team, I'm sorry. From at the team level, I know you can go in here and manage users and some of the access that they have. Uh, oh, it's in channels, it's a tab across the top channels. So look, here, here you can say what they can see, what they have access to. Um, and I, there's some further options you can get into where they, you know, a guest cannot delete, uh, you know, a thread, right? A, a guest or a, a user can't delete the thread. They can just do that, but an admin can. Right. Um, and then the last question I want to wrap up on here, Justin, and we're going to proceed through the end here. So I get you guys all this, this information. Um, let's talk about quickly, uh, Bill had a question here about um, OneDrive versus Teams versus SharePoint. I think there's a lot of confusion out there about where all these technologies lie. And so my explanation that I always give, and I'd love to hear yours, SharePoint is the, is the centralized hub for the file shares and, and cloud shares for the organization, right? SharePoint is the business centralized file share hub. OneDrive has that same kind of concept, but on a personal notion, right? So for the end user to have their documents synced across their home machine, their office machine, their, their, uh, you know, their personal devices, laptop. Is that how you would kind of quantify that? Yeah, absolutely. So what I always kind of tell people, I, I relate it back to what, uh, to some Microsoft terms and nomenclature that they're used to. So OneDrive is, it replaces your my, doc, my, your my Documents folder that you have on your computer. That's what OneDrive is. OneDrive is your My Documents in the new cloud era, right? Uh, so those files are only available to you. 
unless you share them with other individuals, which you can do. SharePoint replaces that old common S drive or Z drive or, or whatever that file share you have that, that maps to your computer that everybody in your office uh, has access to. Now you may have you know, different permissions on different folders uh, within that you know, root uh, share, but at the end of the day, that's what SharePoint is. It replaces that common drive that everybody in the, access, everybody in the office can access. And then, and then Teams, I guess, you know, Teams just brings everything together. It, it, it creates the hub that everything talks to. Cool. Perfect. Thank you, Justin. I'm going to uh, push forward, guys. We've got just a few minutes left. I want to make sure we get you out here before the end of the hour. But I do want to give you a little bit of context for us here at TechVera. And, and uh, Teams, our journey with Teams here is, you know, as IT professionals, as, as the guys on the, on the uh, front lines, we adopted this about a year ago. And prior to that, we were very heavy in Skype for Business, the chat solution, right? Uh, and so going from that chat only solution to now uh, using Teams in the business, that we saw a lot of, uh, a lot of value that, that we could drive out of using this application. I will be the first to admit that we were maybe scratching maybe 30, 30 40% of the value out of that application until the COVID and work from home situations happened. Okay, that ushered in, you know, a, a new dependency on this application, whether it's post COVID, pre COVID, somewhere in between, uh, whether you have remote workers or not, uh, this application has value for your business. And so, um, you know, it's, it's been a game changer for us. We do our daily meetings in and that um, we do a Justin does a meeting with our production team every morning. I do one in the afternoon. And it's been very useful. Um, I wanted to uh, you know, if we could give the audience just a couple of minutes here, Justin, you know, you've, you've seen this, you've, you've taken over Teams implementations that didn't go so well, you've taken some out from the ground up. And when we, before we started this webinar an hour ago, we said, we want to show everyone how easy this is to do and that you don't have to be a technical uh, wizard to be able to, to roll this out. And so what would be some advice you'd give to our audience here about, um, you know, ways to tackle this? and do it to where it's an effective rollout and, and conceptually everyone grasps it and the, the company really adopts it. Right, so you just, you just you said the key word there, adoption. Right, so you've got to determine how you're gonna drive adoption in your, in your organization. Now, if you're the business owner or you're a key member of the uh, decision-making team and you decide you wanna roll out teams, it's easy to kind of push adoption throughout um, you know, your managers and middle management and end users and things like that. Um, but if you're kind of a middle manager and you're looking to, you know, roll out teams in your organization, it's, you know, figuring out the value that the teams is going to provide to your organization in order, in order to drive adoption from the top. Once you've got adoption down and you know that this is going to take a foothold and, and it's going to work out like you want it to, figuring out the organization of how teams is going to be laid out is very, very important because if you don't set a structure and set permissions around who can create teams, who can create channels, those sorts of things. Very soon, you're gonna have a team sprawl. Files are gonna be everywhere. You're not gonna know where some things are, right? Uh, which can happen in, your, in the organization now. People store files everywhere on their desktop, their documents, and you know, server and whatnot. And if you don't have restrictions around that, very soon you can find yourself in a, in a situation where you're not controlling all the data. So, you know, making sure you plan out your team's deployment is very important. Cool, cool. And then what would you say, Justin, what would be the, um, for you, the way that you use it, the way you interact with our team and remote users, people outside the organization, what do you find as the, like, what's the most useful feature? What's the most useful application for this that you are personally using um, for teams? Yeah, I think it's, you know, one, it's being able to have those one-on-one -on -one conversations with people, uh, even when they're not in the office. It's very easy when you're in the office to go, hey, Charles, like, hey, what's going on? Um, but when you're all remote and you need a quick way to talk to somebody, Teams is the answer to that, right? Or if you need to communicate with your team, if I need something, if I need to let my entire team know uh, of a situation that's happening at a client's office or an important notification, I can pop that into a channel and boom, it's communicated to everybody very quickly. Um, and it keeps us from going through those, those, I call them deadly email chains. They're just, it's just over and over and over, reply after reply after reply. And then somebody replies and they forgot to 
you know, not copy everybody. They said something they shouldn't have. And you know, so uh, using Teams in lieu of email a lot more often now. And that's been, that's been a game changer. Cool. Okay. Thank you. And I know for me, as, as much as we correspond and as many things as we've got going on, it's been very easy to, con to consolidate everything into this platform. And, you know, when we have a weekend and we check out, we go, you know, have a life outside of work, it's easy for me to use this tool to get wrapped right back in and know where everything's at. So thank you, man. Um, so guys, I want to hit on our next topic here, <clears throat> Teams versus Zoom. You know, what is the difference? What are these why are you running a webinar on, on Zoom for Microsoft Teams, right? Very good question. So um, what is the difference? As we have demonstrated through this uh, session here, Teams is that centralized uh, hub where all your Microsoft productivity suite is going to work, right? So yes, it does video. Yes, it does chat. It even does webinar and some of those features. Uh, but this is much more honed in on a productivity kind of business use case. Zoom is kind of wide open, right? You can use that to chat with your grandma. You can use it to chat with your team, with clients, vendors, whatever the case may be. Uh, but, but Zoom is a video conferencing application. It's not a centralized work hub, right? So when should you use Zoom? Uh, for me personally, uh, through the COVID situation, I've used Zoom to connect with my relatives. It's very easy for an end user to hop on Zoom on a phone. Um, you do have a, you know, you need a Microsoft account to be on Teams. It's just a little bit more involved, right? And so I use Zoom from a social manner um, with the caveat of, and I use it for webinars. The simple reason being um, the Zoom webinar feature, which is an additional kind of component to the Zoom uh, offering. Uh, it's, it's very user-friendly and people are very comfortable with the Zoom technology. As Microsoft gains more and more market share, uh, we, we are um, actively developing our streaming studio so that we can embrace the uh, Microsoft tools on that, that side. They do have enterprise level um, streaming and kind of webinar, Microsoft Stream, Microsoft Live. These are two of the technologies on that front. A little bit more involved, a little bit more involved, um, but I can assure you that, that these are things that Microsoft's actively uh, developing. And the last piece here, security concerns. You know, if you are, uh, you know, an intellectual property uh, attorney, if you're dealing with sensitive information for a client, contracts, are there security concerns for you? Uh, Zoom is riddled with security concerns, right? And you see articles all the time about these security concerns. You see big tech companies, thought leaders in the space. Uh, Google would not allow you to use Zoom. Uh, SpaceX wouldn't. School districts, it's a big deal. And then data breaches are another part of this, right? Any platform is going to get data breaches. But recently, Zoom had uh, a, a, a data breach where uh, they had, I think, 500,000, or sorry, 500 million accounts were compromised. The going rate for those accounts was 10 for a penny on the dark web. Um, and lastly here, guys, the, uh, the big bottleneck that Teams got when it came to uh, video conferencing, the big challenge they've had in the past is that the screen was only able to roll out a quad display on, on a Teams video call up until a couple of weeks ago, you can only see four users. I just wanted to put this out there. This is from our team meeting this morning that Justin ran. Uh, you can see up to nine monitors in that display at one time now. So in terms of next steps, if you have Office 365 or Microsoft 365, you can really dig in. Uh, in the email that you'll get after this, you're going to get a link to Bigger Brains. Uh, that is a, a content learning company. They have a YouTube channel and they've made their team sessions free through the COVID situation. They are incredibly helpful and it's broken into like five, 15 minute chunks. Uh, different sections of teams. So highly recommend those if you have a question about a specific area. And we're going to send you some, some uh, a cheat sheet and the recording as well. So uh, the following event, we have a deep dive, the 201 course, where we're going to take <clears throat> where we left off with that scenario with Jennifer's business. She's got some of her accounting platform. Uh, her accounting department is some is gone digital. We've got some channels underneath it. Now we're going to start adding third-party applications, getting them to integrate into Teams. You know, wouldn't it be great if you're, you know, when you got an email from a vendor, the PDF, the email, everything went into Teams. Hey, there's a bill. You know, would you like to pay this? Yes or no. So we'll talk about all that kind of stuff. Um, that's next week. We've done some Q&A through the session here. I do have about four minutes left. Um, oh, here's a couple of great questions here, and I will answer more after that. Um, Justin, here's one for you. How do you access SharePoint if you don't otherwise use it for your server? 
All right, so as I was showing you a little bit, a little bit ago, from your Office 365 account, uh, you can log in via the, the website, the portal.office.com site. And one of the options you're going to have there is, is SharePoint. I can probably share my screen real quick. Uh, we can just kind of go over that one last time. Um, but yeah, so once you log into your Office 365 account, you can see here that SharePoint is an option. So we click on that, and that now takes us to, to SharePoint. Nice. Um, and you know you can create sites and, and whatnot. But again, if you're at, if you're asking more specifically, how do I access files if I don't have access to them? So um, under this documents folder, which is where your files are, there's actually a sync button here. That sync button would actually put those files on your on your computer so that you're able to access them from there as well. So they do have the ability if they're going offline, if they're going off the grid for a while, they could sync everything locally, make their changes, boom, sync it back up. Absolutely, and it's it's a more familiar interface to people, right? Just using native Windows to access their files versus having to go into a browser. Nice. Okay, thank you, Justin. That was very helpful. Um, so, uh, oh, there was a question here on sharing your desktop versus sharing an application. I think that's more of a Zoom specific question, Drew. Um, you do have the ability to share screens and maybe apps as well as t on Teams. Um, but on Zoom, yeah, so if I were to just share the screen, uh, it would be anything that's in the radio, you know, in the, in the kind of geometry of the screen. If I were to just share the window, like a, like a Chrome browser window, it would just show that and it would maximize it to the full screen display. If that makes sense. Um, guys, we are getting a little tight on time. If there are follow-up questions, I'm going to give you my contact information here in a minute, and I'm happy to talk to you guys offline. Um, like I said, our goal with this was to ensure that you guys uh, knew the value, knew the, the, the potential of this tool that you have access to. Now, as you figure this out for your, your organization, if you want a partner navigating those roads, um, you know, this is in our wheelhouse. This is what we do, and we'd be happy to talk to you about that. You are going to get a recording today, um, and if you do want that consultation with us, um, there is my direct email. There is my direct VoIP line as well. Um, you guys can contact us through that, okay? So um, without any other questions, I want to thank you all for being on here. Hopefully this was a productive hour. I'm going to give you the last 30 seconds of this hour back, and we will see you next week for our 201 course, all right? You guys stay safe, stay healthy, and have a great afternoon. We will thank talk you. to you later. Bye.